Hello everyone. This is a new type of video. I actually asked on my Twitter recently. I said, hey, would you guys like to follow me, you know, covering ongoing cases, cases that are still, you know, being investigated currently, cases that just happened and haven't reached a resolution yet. And the overwhelming response was over like 90, 95% were in favor of me doing something that involved ongoing cases. So I decided, hey, why are we waiting till everything's all, you know, over with and said and done and all that? Why don't we uh, cover it while maybe we could still potentially help by getting some attention out there, which is what uh, brought this first case to mind specifically. So I decided, let's go for it. I decided let's go for it and I hope you guys are into it as well. So yeah, let's uh, let's go into it. But first we have a sponsor uh, who helps me to do these kinds of things. So a uh, big shout out to them. Let's let's do them. Let's do them. Let's do them right now. Hey kids, want to buy some drugs? No. You don't, but you won't need drugs when you have the sponsor of this episode, Raid Shadow Legends. With Halloween right around the corner and the spooky feeling in the air, Raid has some real badass Halloween champions. You're the best in my humble spook daddy opinion. Harvest Jack here, a legendary champ, obviously wins for the most Halloween mf -er in this game. Look at that pumpkin head. <laughs> Little Miss Annie here, another legendary champ, wins for the scariest champ. Easy win. She's gross. She's freaky. Let's be honest. If she showed up in your bedroom, it'd be game over. And Brachus, the shifter, another legendary champ, wins for the Halloween champ I want to be. I want to be this. This is how I see myself in the mirror every morning. He's scary, but he's cool. He's the kind of champ you'd like to have a beer with before he ripped your throat out. Honestly, I really dig all the different champs you can get in Raid. They come in different factions, with each faction having its own badass look and skills. Skills you can use in intense battle. And through Halloween, they've got tons of Halloween events lined up, like tournaments, huge reward opportunities, chances to get insane champs, and more. It's happening right now. So head down to the description below and hit the link or scan the QR code on screen right now to download Raid. New players get Epic Hero Chonoru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 Ancient Shard, which allows you to summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. And every person who downloads Raid helps out my channel. So thanks to all of you who do, and now, on to the episode. So the story we're covering uh, this episode is the Cleo Smith disappearance, four-year-old girl from Western Australia who went missing on October 16th. Now, some of you I'm sure are already familiar with this. A lot of people uh, specifically outside of Australia are not, unfortunately. So I wanted to kind of help put that on the radar. Chloe Smith is an adorable young girl, four years old. She was camping with her family. Her parents are Ellie Smith and Jake Glidden. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Apologies, Jake, if I got that wrong. Um, I did reach out to Ellie on Instagram, just kind of to put it on her radar saying I was going to cover this. I said, hey, I, I kind of want to get it some more attention you know I just get her input on it and, and she was all for it she you know just wanted more she says you know the more attention the better so uh, I was like all right yeah you know what I'll do that then so here I am doing it now uh this story is actually really really tragic and unfortunate it's going to be incredibly difficult for her family um, so it's just for those of you who don't know, I'll take you kind of back to earlier in October when this happened. Um, so the news article is police launched search for Cleo Smith for missing from family's tent at blowhole shacks, north of Carnarvon. It's from ABC news, which is not the American ABC news. It's the Australian broadcasting corporation. So different. So the uh, article starts off saying police are conducting a major search for a four-year-old girl missing from a campsite in Western Australia's Northwest. Cleo Smith was last seen at 1.30 a.m. on Saturday in her family's tent at the Blowhole Shacks in McLeod, about 75 kilometers north of Carnarvon by road. But when her family woke up at 6 a.m., she was missing. Cleo Smith was last seen wearing a pink and purple one-piece sleep suit with a blue and yellow pattern. 
an air, land, and sea search was underway in the area for most of the day on Saturday. Now this, you know, again, just to reiterate this, this was back earlier. This was posted Friday, October 15th, updated 16th of October. I'm not sure the exact day she went missing, but it was either the 15th or 16th. Maybe it was just crossing in. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. She was camping with her uh, and the, uh, her younger sibling at this campground called Blowholes, kind of a weird name, but it makes sense when you go there, there's like underwater caves. Uh, the ocean pushes through these, you know, fissures in the, uh, I don't know, and it explodes. These, it's like kind of like geysers everywhere, I guess. Before 6 a.m., when um, Ellie woke up, 1.30 a.m. comes and Cleo asks for a drink. She's thirsty, gets a drink of water, goes back to bed, and Ellie wakes up around 6 to get her younger daughter, I believe daughter, to um, have a bottle because she's, you know, she's very young. And she notices Cleo isn't there. Now, Cleo is not only missing, but her sleeping bag is missing too. So it was like she was just picked up and taken out of the tent. Now, a lot of people might be wondering, well, how the hell does that happen? You know, it's a tent for crying out loud. And I get it. However, this, and this is where some people kind of go crazy with speculation and, and, and whatnot. The tent is a complex kind of tent. It's like, it's two separate rooms in one tent. Some people think that they were sleeping in separate tents. The mother and father didn't put their two little kids in a separate tent away from them. Like, yeah, you know, we're, we're camping. We don't have time for that. No, that, that's not what happened. They were in separate areas of the same tent. I don't know if tents aren't all just, you know, like a teepee looking thing where, you know, there's only one area. And I believe they're joined together by like kind of this little co common area type. I guess you could call it that little area in between where you can go and take off your shoes, stuff like that. And then you turn to the left, it's probably where Cleo and, and uh, her younger sister were, or to the right, which is where Jake and Ellie were sleeping. Now, very close proximity. Um, immediately what I thought of, I was just like, it's weird that someone would be as brazen to unzip this tent in the middle of the night. Now keep in mind, Blowholes is a very attractive area for tourists. This place had people there. This, her going missing had to have happened at the most opportune time for someone to take a child. In that kind of situation, you'd have to say would be something like, you know, around the time they probably did around 3 a.m., 4 a.m.-ish. I'd say that's where you're, you're most likely to get even the people who stay up later she wakes up around six. Ellie wakes up around six, sees her daughter is gone. The um, zipper on the tent is also pulled up to a height that Cleo would not have been able to reach. Now, there was their uh, land, air, and sea searches all conducted and every, like, everything like that for Cleo. And unfortunately, they turned up nothing. They were very extensive. However, the Blowholes campground area is really like it's full of holes and abandoned mine shafts and all this kind of stuff where a kid could fall. So they had to comb through all of that. You know, it's hard to say they've covered every square inch with how much there is, but maybe they, you know, maybe they've really done that. At this point, the authorities are very um, unlikely to suspect anything other than abduction at this point. The abduction uh, has, you know, evidence concluded by like the zipper being up higher than Cleo could have reached her sleeping bag also being gone. The, you know, she woke up at 1.30 to get a drink of water. She didn't seem delusional. She didn't seem like, you know, dehydrated or anything like that. She just wanted a sip of water, so she got a sip of water. Even if she was to wander off by herself, why take the sleeping bag? Even if she could somehow get the zipper up way higher than she could reach, why take the sleeping bag for a kid that, I mean, it just seems like, why would you want to, you know? Uh, it do that doesn't add up. It, it would add up to say someone is abducting her. You know, they want to take everything. Just take the child, take the sleeping bag, not have, you know, you're not going to sit there and say, okay, let's get you out of the sleeping bag. You know, they're going to take everything they need to. Um, so that's what police are on right now. Police are running with, this is an abduction case. They did check the parents' house to make this, you know, they were seen um, dusting every square inch of the parents' house. Um, for any evidence of anything, uh, going through the, f the parents' phones and everything like that. A lot of people decided to jump on the parents for this, you know, in comment sections, of course, and, you know, say, oh, the parents must be involved somehow or something like that. You know, uh, you know, if the police are there looking at, no, this is standard procedure. The police have said numerous times that the, um, the parents, Ellie and Jake have been nothing 
but entirely helpful and cooperative, and they really genuinely want to find their daughter. So yeah, that's just part of the procedure. Police go through, they have to check everything. If they didn't check the parents, they wouldn't find a number of children that they have found or solve a number of cases that they've solved, um, because sometimes it is the parents. Um, but in this case, all evidence would indicate it is absolutely not the parents who are behind this. Now, the thing that's kind of intrigued me just a little bit is Cleo Smith. Um, Jake is her stepfather, okay? I don't know what the whole biological father situation is. I'm sure police have gone through that. I don't know if the father has passed away. I don't know if the, you know, the biological father has already been spoken with. That hasn't been pushed by the news really that end that angle but probably for a pretty decent reason police probably have ruled that out um, and if he passed away obviously he has nothing to do with this i'm not sure what the situation is there exactly but the police do not seem to believe that that is a thing um, i'm sure they're combing everything including you know maybe the family members of her biological father and whatnot uh obviously you know you're hopeful that they they check everything um, I'm sure Cleo's parents would agree with that. Yeah, this whole situation is kind of, um, kind of crazy because they, it's been over two weeks now. They still have absolutely no idea, um, what happened to Cleo. There is CCTV footage from a number of shacks at this blowholes campground. So one of them actually got Cleo's voice. Despite all the CCTV footage, nobody there's nothing that they've been able to extrapolate from the footage that would say, oh, Cleo is here. However, they are running off one thing. They're trying to find this one particular individual who was leaving the Blowholes campground. Someone, I believe, was driving down the road and saw a car pulling out of the Blowholes campground at around 3 a.m. The police have been trying to locate that person saying, listen, if you were the vehicle pulling out of the Blowholes campground at 3 a.m., you need to contact us. They have not been contacted by this person. It's kind of uh, sketchy. Definitely, I, I hope they're able to reach whoever that was, whether they are, you know, innocent in this or not, you know, just to be able to rule them out. I don't know. That kind of thing is, uh, is weird because, you know, this place is packed, right? There are a lot of people at this campground and nobody saw this. Getting into a tent is like the loudest thing in the world at night, right? Getting into a tent is like the loudest thing. How do you not hear that? However, Ellie did mention later on during an interview with, I can't remember which news outlet it was, really not that important, but she uh, spoke during an interview with Jake um, where they were appealing to the public to, you know, if you see something, please call, say anything. They, uh, she mentioned that it was like a, uh, a windy night, a really windy kind of overcast. It was almost like, you know, it was going to be a rough night. So that would have given this person enough cover to do this. Man, I, you know, they're, they're also investigating a, a potential stalker situation where this guy has been kind of keeping their, his eye on them for a while. I don't know if that's going to pan out. It doesn't seem they found anything to really solidify that. Whoever this was, you know, if it's a family member that says, you know, we feel that we want the, you know, we want Clo uh, Cleo to ourselves. We want Cleo to, you know, she belongs with us and they do something deranged or messed up because they're probably not going to harm the child. Of course, everything, you know, what's going through everyone's mind is maybe this child is in danger. This, I mean, the child's in danger absolutely being taken, right? Or if she even wandered off somehow, if that were to be the case. You know, we'll, we'll be sure to show on screen a number of times throughout this video, Cleo's face, the clothes she was wearing, everything like that. Now, the reason, you know, I'm in America, I'm an American YouTube guy. So talking about this isn't going to pack as much of a punch as if I was an Australian creator, because my fan base would be largely Australian if I were, but I am not. I am an American, but there are a lot of people out there. I do have an Australian fan base. And I'm sure plenty of you in the comments will be making yourselves known, you loud, rowdy bunch. There are plenty of people that live all over the world who have people, friends, relatives, whoever, that live in Australia. Contact these people. If you don't know explicitly that they have this Cleo Smith story on their radar, if you don't know it explicitly, like you've seen them share something about it, just drop them a line. Send them a text, send them a, a Facebook message, send them anything. Um, to try to 
put it on their radar so they know what's going on. You know, it, it's a frightening thing. I'm kind of jumping all over the place, and I apologize. My brain has kind of been scattered. But um, it really is an unfortunate situation, of course. But it's, you know, this this person who took her knew exactly when to do it. You know, maybe he was someone staying at the campground or something like that. They don't have any, like, check-in or anything like that. So it's not like they have names written down. Yeah, uh, so... This person must have been watching at least for that whole night, paying attention to the weather, knowing, you know, that, okay, the wind is whipping, it's very loud. The balls on this person to do something like that, like to go up, I mean, it's a tent. I don't care how loud it is outside. I don't care if it's Armageddon. That's going to be loud. That zipper, that, you know, it's uh, kind of crazy. And then he's able to step into the tent. Now, the tent being bigger than a normal tent, obviously allowed for this. I, I, I don't know. He just he, he went in there. He took her with the sleeping bag and he was gone probably around 3 a.m. That car pulling out of blowholes and the police have have stated that, you know, they can't exactly say, oh, this person isn't coming forward, you know, and they know what's going on. And they're not coming forward. That's not necessarily the case because the police have stated um, a number of times that people will go up and down the coast of Australia, you know, just vacationing and stuff like that. And they'll be off the grid. You know, you could be out in the middle of nowhere in Australia. A whole crap ton of Australia is nowhere. You'll be off the grid. You won't have any idea anything's happening, especially if you're just camping from one spot to another. You're not even on the internet, really. I mean, that's going to play a role in this as well. So it's unknown if this person has anything to do with it. However, they were awake at a time that no one else seemingly was. And during the window of time between 1.30 a.m. I would say a little bit after that. I don't think anyone's going to see her wake up, get a sip of water, then charge in there at, you know, 134, you know, because the mother could still be awake from, you know, you get a drift back to sleep, probably waited 20, 30 minutes. So between that point and 6 a.m., she was gone. That person was awake and functioning at that time. Is it the person who took Cleo? No idea, obviously. No one got a license plate, anything like that. It's just a really really kind of tragic situation um the authorities have issued a one million dollar reward for any information leading to a capture or leading to the discovery of cleo to the resolution of this case police have been getting a lot of tips you know obviously people are want to make their million dollars and there are people out there you know it's not about the money for them They're using aboriginal trackers and a whole bunch of you know other resources and individuals with particular you know abilities and skill sets and all that kind of stuff so you know they've got this massive force of people plus a million dollar reward that gets just about everyone interested everyone's looking out and there's still nothing there are occasionally cases where children are never found in any way shape or form even if the person who took them is um and you know pays the price for it not any price that's conducted in any reasonable society that would justify you know that, that would bring justice in any way shape or form uh to this kind of situation unfortunately this is the kind of thing that's got to be beyond agonizing and um you know i wish ellie and jake the absolute best um i i hope you you find cleo i hope she's all right you know uh, that that's all you can hope for it's all you can do but you know, again, if you know anybody in Australia, reach out to them. Put this on their radar. Let them know what's going on. This is important. This is a critical thing. So, um, and that's about it. That's about it. Just want to put on your radar. I want to cover these ongoing cases, more freeform style. I don't want to really script it so much. And yeah, I, I hope you got something out of it. Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of this kind of format. But again, the, the main priority here is Clio. Uh, finding Cleo Smith, four years old, missing from, from blowholes near Carnivon in Western Australia um, about a little over two weeks ago. So I wish the best to all investigators trying to find Cleo, and I hope Cleo is brought home safe and sound. I really do. I really do. All right. Take care. <laughs>